and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Racing Stacks TBR. This is where I play a really fun, really fun, top tier, fun, so fun game that never messes with me, never screws me over, never makes my month super more stressful than it needs to be or anything like that. It's a great game, guys. It's a great game. If you can't tell, I've already played the game today because I thought usually what I do is I do a cheeky little intro and then I go away and I play the game and then I come back and I tell you what I'm going to be reading. Except this time, because I was doing it while sprinting on Liz's channel, I had to do the game real quick and then I'd come back to filming it later and do the intro and everything else. And for some reason, my mouse was on the absolute fritz today. I don't know what was going on, but it was throwing my arm all about the place and I've picked up a whole bunch of genres I don't want. I don't want them. I don't want them. Without further ado, here's that carnage, and then I'll tell you about the other books that I've got on my TBR. Okay, so I want contemporaries, I want easy reads, I want something that I can squeeze festive and spooky stuff into as an, as I see fit, basically. So, let's go. Why are you not working? I don't know what that is, that's a middle grade, that's a sci-fi, that's a fantasy. Let's go for one of those. That's a contemporary. Going on the middle grade. I don't know what the butterflies are. Oh, I think I got a thriller. Oh, I think that's too many middle grades. I already think that's too many middle grades. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Gothic fiction, middle grade, fantasy, gothic fiction. One contemporary and a classic unhaul. I don't want to unhaul anything yet. I'm not ready to unhaul anything yet. So, no, absolutely not. We're going to go again. That was not a good round at all. Um, let's try again. All right, contemporary, middle grade. Mm, avoid sci-fi. Let's go for a romance. Let's go for another contemporary. We'll avoid the classics, middle grade. Don't want any historical fiction. Let's go gothic. Let's go romance. Let's go thriller. Got enough middle grade. Another romance. Ro not that. I don't want that many romances. Don't want to match gothic. Too many romances. I want something else. Give me something else. Where are the contemporaries? Throw some contemporaries at me. So there's one. There we go. Okay. So contemporary orange cover. Uh, possible middle grade found family. Romance a pink cover. Should be doable. Um, contemporary still from someone's TBR. Middle grade haiku titles. That's three books. That's three books. I don't think I can do that. Um, I'm not happy with this one either. I'm not happy with this one either. Although it does give me the opportunity to, to haul a book. It's coming to the end of the year. I want something easier than this. These prompts are... No, we're going to go for the third one. After I've done the third one, that's it. I've got to take it or leave it. So let's hope, fingers crossed, for something better than this. Okay, let's start with a romance. Oh, I picked up a sci-fi. I didn't want that. Um, middle grade. I'm not even trying. What is going on with my mouse? I'm just picking up ones I didn't even mean to because my mouse is like all over the shop. Thriller. Avoid the history. Like, I've absolutely shot myself in the foot by going for a third one because I've got loads in there that I didn't mean to. Non fiction haiku titles. That's worse. That's worse. Racing stacks. What is going on? This is the end of the year. Why are you doing this to me? Science fiction highest rated. God damn. God damn. Um, contemporary, middle grade, uh, gothic fiction cat pick, which is trickier because the cat that lives here now, uh, there was one cat that I was using in particular, which is my flatmate's cat, Percy. That flatmate has moved out, thus so has the cat. So that's gonna be a tricky one to do just in general because the other cat isn't really interested in treats in the same way. Like Percy, I could put an array of books out and she would pick for me, but Blue is less likely to do that. We can work on it. Middle grade, LGBTQ theme, mystery, a new to me author, a non-fiction haiku title. Like, brilliant. Good work, Hannah, love that for me. A mystery that matches my outfit, so black and white, okay. Actually, that's probably gonna help me. That I can do, that's fine. Um, thriller, villain perspective, and a romance next in series. Also doable. 
I'm not thrilled about it. I'm not thrilled about it, but it's fine. We'll work with it. Okay, right. I'll see you in a bit. She got haiku non-fiction. Could have stuck with haiku middle grades. Didn't want that many middle grades. Ended up with haiku non-fiction. Wasn't planning on doing non-fiction November, but here we are. So my reading for November, I'm just doing racing stacks and my Luna book club pick, I am not doing any readathons. I'm not doing anything like that. I like to wind down towards the end. I rarely even make a TBR for December, although I will be this year, but for very specific books. And then the additional challenge, the reason I'm not doing any readathons is because I like to read widely. I like to read up lots of little things. I like to pick up and have a little sampling taste of all the things that I'm reading. I'm not allowed to do that in November. I mean, I am, I am allowed to do that because I'm an adult, but I will not be doing that in November because Celine from Stuff Celine Does has said that if I can go an entire month only reading one book at a time, she will buy me a book. I love free books. Free books are amazing. I am taking this challenge very seriously. So before I filmed my TBR racing stacks, I put a massive stack of books together that I know will take my 100% attention and I won't need to dip in and out of other things. And then I managed to get two of those books on this list. Fuming. Absolutely fuming. <sighs> I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. TBR Racing Stacks really did me dirty in November. Really did me dirty. But anyway, let's go through the books that I've got to read one after the other. Okay. Anyway, right. We'll start nice and easy. A mystery that matches my outfit. Now I am doing a kind of behind the scenes bevies thing at the moment with some friends that we're hoping to bring back in in January. Um, and we've been picking books for each other to read. And this is a book that has been picked for me. And then I was able to double it up with a mystery that matches my outfit. Now I am wearing a black and white skull t-shirt. Uh, this is a black and white cover with this dude, it's not quite a skull, but I think it matches pretty well. I've read The Picture of Dorian Gray before. It's a really interesting mystery, but it is one of those, because it's a classic Victorian mystery, it's one of those ones where I know what's gonna happen. Even, even before reading it, I knew what was gonna happen. So this is more because I've bought myself a newer copy. I need to read it. I need to read the books that I buy and not just buy pretty covers of things and hope that I will get to them at some point. This one, this one's not too bad. On the scale of books that I'm mad about, this isn't really on that list. So we're off to an okay start. We also have a romance next in a series. I always love when next in a series comes up because it means that I can finally tick off the next book in a series because I always forget to do that. I only have the actual age Eve Brown left of the Brown Sisters trilogy. So I'm really excited about this one. This one, the main character is autistic. She is helping someone um, run an inn and they kind of have a crush on each other and I, I imagine it's going to be kind of grumpy sunshine romance. I really enjoy Talia Hibbert's, Talia Hibbert's mix of banter and steam. Danny Brown was not my favourite. I much prefer Chloe Brown but I've heard that if you like Chloe Brown you will like this one even more. So I'm really really hyped for this one and it's probably just the kind of nice gentle read that I need for November. Now this one is a stretch. I didn't have any thrillers where I knew for sure it would be from the villain's perspective. So I've gone for a cosy mystery with a villain perspective instead. Now this is very, very new. It is technically not on my TBR yet, but I'm sure I can clear a TBR vet in time to read it in November. Um, Richard Osman writes a really fun murder mystery series, which is known as the Third A Murder Club. This is the third in that series. And he always gives the villain a kind of, even if short, a perspective as they're kind of dealing with the crimes and stuff. In the first one, you have a bunch of old people living in a retirement home, enjoy solving cold cases and kind of studying cold cases in their retirement. And then someone dies on their property and they have to solve the crime. The second one is very similar, but it involves a diamond heist, which is really fun. And I went into that one completely blind. I'm going into this one completely blind as well. I have no idea what the mystery is going to be in this. I just know that it will have a villain perspective because of Richard Osman's style of writing. So it ticks that point. Okay, let's get to my non-fiction haiku titles. A haiku is a poem that is three lines that is usually five, seven, five syllables in it. The five syllables is never difficult. It's never difficult to fill the five syllables line. It is always so much more difficult to fill the seven syllable line, but I think I have done it with this stack. So the first line is going to be Shakespeare for Grown Ups, which is by E. Foley and B. Coates, which are the same co-authors who wrote What Would Boudicca Do? That was a really interesting and fun 
uh, non-fiction that was kind of like half self-help, half historical guides. And this is kind of breaking down stuff about Shakespeare that if you are interested in Shakespeare, you might not know, you might know, but it steps away from the kind of young adult YA sanitized version of Shakespeare um, and I'm really excited to get to that one. For the seven syllables I really struggled so I've kind of taken half of the title of this one which is why I'm no longer talking and then it's two white people about race um, but I'm ignoring that bit. We're just doing the why I'm no longer talking because I've been meaning to get to this nonfiction for ages. I bought this pretty much the same day it came out um, and then just haven't made the time for it, which is not good on my part. The UK's Black History Month is coming to an end. I think it's really important to find more time to promote books about racism and kind of combating racism. And this one was kind of a flash in the pan moment. Everyone bought it and was reading it. And then I haven't really heard a lot about it since. I need to read it and find out why. And then the third one is I'm Glad My Mum Died, which is another new release, which is technically not on my TBR yet. But again, I think I can squeeze another TBR vet in so that I can get to this one. This is by Jeanette McCurdy, who was a Disney, either a Disney or a Nickelodeon kid. Her mum was very, very pushy and very much abusive. And this is her memoir after her mum has died, talking about the abuse that she sustained while still loving her mum and wanting to take care of her. So three very, very different non-fictions, which is great, but I really didn't want to read non-fiction for November. I really, really didn't want to read non-fiction for November, even though it's a whole thing that people do. It's just not my thing. I like non-fiction, but I like it on my terms. But for at least one of these, this is the one that I'm going to prioritise because I've had it for so long. Um, and then these two, I'm, I am looking forward to. I'm just not looking forward to them as much as I'm looking forward to easy crime dramas. Then we had a mystery with a new to me author. I will be picking up Reprieve. This was the November and October book club pick for books nests patreon and i just didn't get to it in time really for the book club so i'm going to be picking it up in november i don't know anything about it i'm just really looking forward to sharing my thoughts in that discord in particular then we had middle grades with an lgbtq theme now i have read most of the middle grades that i own i'm really running low on new middle grades so i need to change that up for the new year but i'm going for a book that has an lgbtq plus key theme and is by an author who i've really enjoyed their middle grades um so benjamin dean who wrote me my dad and the end of the rainbow and there was the, like the sunshine project i think was the other one this is technically a ya but i'm imagining it'll be quite a young ya to middle grades it's about a royal who is black and queer and has people coming for his throne so i'm intrigued by this one i that's all i know about it and the fact that i trust this author so that'll be good now when i was recording the clip where i was doing racing stacks i said that it would be difficult to get the cat <laughs> to pick for me so i need to remove that prompt moving forwards because no cat is here to pick for me blue is asleep upstairs he's not interested and i don't want to have to drag him downstairs and force him to play a game he doesn't want to play so i am punishing myself a little bit and i'm going for the oldest gothic fiction the oldest gothic fiction on my tbr instead the mistress of udolpho this is the copy that i studied at university and it has been nearly <laughs> it's been nearly 10 years since i graduated so it has definitely been 10 years since i read this now i love gothic fiction it's one of my favorite genres but she is chunky she is very chunky, not a lot happens, it's all vibes, and I remember it not being my favourite when I studied it, but I think I've definitely come to appreciate the genre more since I've graduated, so I'm hoping I will really like it, but I'm definitely more nervous about this one than other ones on my TBR this month, but it is big and it will require a lot of my attention, so I think it will work for the whole only reading one book at a time thing. Then we have middle grade contemporary and I am putting like a charm back on my TBR. I have TBR'd this once before, but I'm hoping it was for Book Wanderers because then that's a three month reader. That's a three month readathon. So I can just kind of tick off another prompt for that. I don't know anything about this. I just know that generally, although that seems to have a fantasy vibe, Elle McNichols writes speculative fiction slash contemporaries with autistic and neurodivergent main characters. And I'm really excited to get to this one. This I've had it for a couple of months now and I'm really, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for this one. I just keep not prioritizing it. So 
now's the time. Then we had Sci-Fi Highest Rated, and I will be picking up Descender Volume 1. This is technically my flatmate's copy, but it was the highest rated on my Goodreads. I really wanted to get to Saga Volume 10, and I will probably find time to squeeze Saga Volume 10 in to November, but in the meantime, this will have to do, I suppose. It's fine, we'll deal with it. But yeah, really excited to get to this one. I don't know much about it, except that it's quite clearly a robot kid equaling sci-fi so and then finally i have romance a debut author i will be reading the life and medieval times of kit sweetly this is the debut by jamie Pacton, although they do have a couple of other books come out since then um and this is about a couple i think i think it's an lgbtq romance as well but it's set at a renaissance fair and i'm just really excited for that um it feels like it's going to be a very gentle ya romance and again just what i need in november <sighs> so there we have it some books that I'm excited about, some I'm less excited about. The upside is I never punish myself if I don't read the books on my TBR that I need to get to, but there are definitely ones on this list that I need to prioritise. Let me know in the comments down below, where do you think I should start? Where does one start with this absolute carnage? Are there any books on this list that you've read already and that you really enjoyed? Again, let me know. And if you just want to leave a little race car or race horse to let me know you were here, that is also great. Treat yourself to something from Waypoint because it supports me and my content. Don't forget to like and subscribe and most importantly have a nice day. Yeah.